Leeds United have hit a little bit of an injury crisis following the international break. The international break has definitely hampered the Whites, and Daniel Farker has a very, very tough job coming up. But how serious are the issues, and what will it mean for the rest of the season at Leeds United? I'll get into that in a moment, but first, I may need a little bit of leeway for a moment for a couple of videos. This is a completely new StreamYard account that I've got right now, which means that I don't have any of my, like, preset colour schemes, branding stuff, including this. You might notice that's a slightly different colour, different shape. I need to sort that out, so please be kind for the meantime. That would be massively appreciated. So, diving into the players. First up, we need to talk about Jorginho Ruter, because thankfully, he isn't on the injury list, as far as we're aware. We knew going into the international break that he was going through a hernia surgery. He'd struggled with it for a few weeks, which Daniel Farker mentioned in his press conference was weeks rather than months, which is a good thing. Um, so he went out, got surgery, and thankfully that hernia surgery apparently went well. And it's looking like he's very likely to be available for the game on Friday, which is absolutely colossal. Ruter does things that no other player at Leeds United does in the number 10 role in terms of creating opportunities. And him being available means that we have that extra little tool in our arsenal that help can just crack open a defence. Especially useful against Watford, I think. But, aside from Rutte, you need a squad around him, don't you? So who else is fine? First off, Glenn Kamara seems alright. Relatively speaking, after having lost to Wales, I'm imagining that on an emotional level, might be a little bit sad. But physically, he's okay, and he will look to bounce back with good performances for Leeds United. Another player that is doing really well right now is Archie Gray, who will be absolutely buzzing. Had something like a total of 90 minutes-ish with his time in the England under-21s, in which he scored a goal and assisted a goal. Can't complain about that in the slightest. He's proven himself at an international level at the moment, and whilst that senior call-up is yet to come, it'll come in the long run. And if he keeps impressing in the England under-21s, his morale is only going to keep going up and up and up and up and he'll keep proving himself. In addition to that, Matteo Joseph doesn't seem to have any problems in terms of fitness. In fact, he scored for Spain's under-21s, which is fantastic. Shows that he's on good form. If we desperately need to turn to him, we can do. Fantastic. Anyway, now the risks. There are significantly more injury risks than players that we saw go away, and we were like, you'll be completely fine. First up, we need to talk about the Wales gang. They got back at Thorpe Arch this morning, and they will train a grand total of once before the game against Watford. That feels like it's not going to be enough, and in addition to that, it's not likely to be team training either. Daniel Farker mentioned it's likely to be individual training, because that's a little bit better for rehab, recovery sort of stuff. It's less strenuous, and it means that they will be able to bounce back a lot more effectively. However, that is the case for James, Rodon, and Perdue. Slightly different for Conor Roberts. He went off limping in the most recent match for Wales against Poland. He's unlikely to be available for this match, apparently. Specifically, I think the phrasing that Daniel Farker used was, it's not often that you see someone limp off and be available two days later. Completely a fair way of putting it, and means that we should probably look to the fullback areas to be a little bit safe in this game. In addition to that, Dan James is surely emotionally hit by missing the final penalty of the shootout, but... I feel like he's the sort of strong character that will be able to bounce back and ultimately perform very effectively as a result. Next up, we need to talk Junior Furpo. A lot of you think that I do too much talking, Junior Furpo. I quite like him. However, he gets back to the UK on Thursday morning with the match being on Friday. That doesn't feel like it's that much time. And he likely won't have the opportunity to train with the side. This is because he played with the Dominican Republic all the way over in Peru. The match finished in the early hours of Wednesday morning, UK time, and it takes a while to get back, and odds are he's going to be jet-lagged as all hell, and it's going to be really, really, really tough for Furpo to play, but because of the Connor Roberts thing, because Connor Roberts is injured, he could still be a necessity in the side. We could still need to see Junior Furpo either start or be on the bench, because in terms of fullbacks, we are not that blessed. And you would think you could just put Archie Gray at right back and then Sam Byram at left back. But there's a further issue in that Ilya Gruev has returned with an issue in his ankle. If I remember right, it was a little bit of a tweak in one of the ligaments in that sort of area of his body, which is not really what you want to have to deal with in the slightest, is it? But here we are. 
It's something that can worsen if you overwork it. And whilst it is a busy time of the season, we won't want to take any risks at all with someone such as Ilya Gruev, who is so efficient and important. And there's a little statistic that I want to pull up, actually. And this is going to be a surprisingly important statistic that uh, you should pay attention to for tomorrow's episode of Balls Knowledge. Um, Ilya Gruev, when he has played at Leeds United, has a winning percentage of 81. Four out of five games Ilya Gruev plays, we win. He's a fundamental part of this team and we desperately need him. It's an injury that can easily get worse and we just have to hope that it doesn't. On the subject of injuries we hope don't get worse, Willy Nonto came back with a knock from Italy duty. He did play competitive football for Italy's under-21s in an attempt to get them qualified for the Euros. I think he succeeded in doing that. I've not double-checked. I'll be completely honest with you. And he isn't certain to be out, but it's far from 100% that he is going to be fit and healthy and ready to play, which is bad for Leeds United because we need those wide positions fit and firing. And Nonto, when he has played, especially away from home, because that's where he scores most of his goals, has been incredible. And it does leave us quite vulnerable in wide positions, because if you consider the fact that Anthony hadn't played that many matches before the international break, Dan James potentially could be going through some mental issues as a result of that missed penalty. Willie Nonto has a knock. That's not good for your wingers. And that's not the only places in which we're dealing with the big old injury problems because Pascal Strauch, dear, sweet Pascal, he had a hernia injury, double hernia. And the idea was to use injection therapy to fix it. Issue is injection therapy hasn't fixed it. And he's needed to go under the knife, get some surgery. And to be fair, he had his surgery last week. Reportedly it went well, it was last Monday. And I'm not going to complain about that because it's a surgery that will definitely help the guy and it means that long-term recovery is likely to be better for him. However, it does end his season. And it means no more Pascal Stroke for Leeds United for the rest of the season. And if it hasn't been clear enough to you already, I hate international breaks. Why have they got to do this to us? Like, honestly, come on. I just want our players fit. I want us to do well for the rest of the championship season and you do this. Bastards. Anyway, let me know what you think uh, down in the comments below. Like the video if you enjoyed and subscribe. Even become a channel member if you fancy. It's on the affordable side. And I will see you later. And I'm going to do a little bit of a treat for you uh, latecomers, the ones that stick around all the way to the end of the video. Tomorrow's episode of Balls Knowledge will feature Evie Holmes O'Brien, Discourse of Peacocks, and she is actively hunting down, down Joe's score. So that's going to be good fun. Hope you enjoyed. See you later.